Nice. Considered to be one of the greatest crossovers of all times, kind of like right up there with the X-Files Cops crossover series. And yes, that is an actual thing. You can go ahead and look it up. But we're not here to talk about old TV shows. We're here to talk about Diamond Star Motors, baby, DS. M. What started in 1985 as a collaboration effort between Chrysler and Mitsubishi gave birth to one of the most iconic four-cylinder turbocharged cars of the 1990s, featured in some of the biggest movies like Fast and the Furious, video games like Need for Speed Underground, and yes, we have it here today. We're going to get behind the wheel of this 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. Uh, back on deck on my fly shit. Uh, really on, really on my shit. Uh, pay some respect to my mindset. Hey, uh, The roots of Diamond Star Motors can be traced all the way back to the 1970s, where Chrysler had a good amount of stakes in with Mitsubishi back in the day. They were responsible for importing a good majority of the Mitsubishi cars from that time into the United States. It wouldn't be until about 1985 that the Diamond Star Motor division would be born. Diamond coming from the three diamonds that can be found in the Mitsubishi logo, and Star coming from the star that's in the Chrysler logo. It's about as original as a first name last name Instagram photography account. But we're going to let it slide because they built some absolutely badass vehicles. The first generation of the DSMs brought us to cars such as the Plymouth Laser, the Eagle Talon, and of course the Mitsubishi Eclipse. They were new all-wheel drive, four-cylinder turbocharged platforms being brought into the United States of America and people freaking love them. 1995 brought us the second generation of the DSM and even though we lost the Plymouth Laser, we still had the Eagle Talon and the Mitsubishi Eclipse. In 1997, the second gen received a much needed, in my opinion, facelift, coining the 2GB version of the Mitsubishi Eclipse, giving us a new front end, some new side skirts, and the awesome rear wing. So like I said, this is RJ's 99 Eclipse GSX, and he was grateful enough to let us borrow it for a little bit, to go drive it around, show it to you guys, and just show what an awesome car this actually is. So before we go ahead and hop into it, let's take a look around and see what is all done to this car. So first and foremost, you know we gotta take a look at the wheels and tires on this thing. So right here, we have some Rays or Grand Lights 57 DRs. Now this is a square setup, 18 by eight and a half, plus 37 offset, so a pretty specific offset not one that you really see a whole lot of, but it fits the 2G platform so damn good. Sometimes plus 35s, they get a little too aggressive. Plus 40s are kind of sunk in a little bit. Sometimes you gotta run a spacer. I think the plus 37s, even though it is a bit of an odd offset, looks really good. Paired with the Nitto MT555 G2, 245-40 for the size, really gives this a nice aggressive look little kind of like OEM plus in a sense, but it looks so damn good. And these NT555s, same tires I had on my FRS for a while when I was rocking the NKs, absolutely loved them. They're a great tire for the price. So other modifications on this car include an Apexy or Apex International, however you want to say it, N1 catback exhaust, Megan Racing Catalyst downpipe, an engine intake, an Evo 9 recirculation valve. We're sitting on some Tane Flex Z coilovers. Got a B&M short throw shifter, and then an RM DSM sway bar. So. As you can see, not a whole lot of exterior stuff done to this car, and that is okay. These cars look so damn good from the factory and just with, you know, some wheel tires, suspension, your suspension bits, you know, maybe if you wanna throw a lip kit on there, go for it, but you don't really need it. These cars look so damn good. It's such a timeless look to them. So with all that being said, let's hop in and go for a ride. Oh man, oh yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I like it. Takes me back, man. Takes me 
freaking back. So, if you guys don't know my story or involvement with cars, I had a 98 Eclipse GS. So, it's just a base model, non-turbo, 420A. I know, I get it. So, hopping back into here feels really good. I'm really excited to take this car for a drive. I love the GSX. I love the 2G platform. And this being just such a clean example of it. I mean, just look at this interior. There's not a thing wrong with it. You even got the little window triangles. I think I lost those. I don't even think my car came with them. So yeah, super excited about this. This car is absolutely immaculate. 92,000 miles, pretty damn good. So let's go ahead, take it for a little drive. So RJ got this car last year, October, 2020. Ooh, that feels good. That feels so good. Uh, so he's had it for about, yeah, actually, you know, coming up on almost a year when you really kind of think about it. Uh, so I think he bought it off Bring a Trailer um, to get some immaculate cars off of there. I didn't ask how much he paid for it because I was a little scared to ask. Because if you look for like 2G Eclipses, especially a 99 GSX manual, low miles, no strut tower rust, you're paying a good amount of money for it, man. I think I've seen him going 12, 15K right now. So, you know, this is an absolute gem of a car. Uh, I know he's super pumped about it. He's actually owned a lot of DSM's Eclipses in the past. Uh, he actually came off of an American Muscle Trend. So he had a Corvette before this. So coming back to a 90s Mitsubishi, says a lot about a car. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> I hope the audio can pick up the, the exhaust a little bit. Apexy, I know it's like super common with uh, the 2Gs, uh, even just like 90s cars in general, made a lot of exhaust. The N1's just that single exit exhaust. Sounds really damn good. The 4Gs, you know, let's talk about the 4G63 a little bit. So the 4G63 is the power plant of the DSM. That is like what the DSMs are known for. There are other engine platforms mixed in there. Like I said, you can kind of consider like the Chrysler 420A to be a DSM. Some people get all up in arms about it. It really depends. Um, but the 4G63 is what made the DSM known for what it is. It's such a strong engine. Uh, the, the blocks are incredibly strong. They can make a lot of power. You can stroke them up to like a 2.3 liter with like really not a ton of work if that's the route that you want to go. They're just really good engines and like they've just held up for so long. Something that a lot of people will say too, you know, you'll hear a lot, uh, 4G63 is known for a couple issues. So like, you know, your crank walk, probably like the biggest thing that you'll hear about the 4G63 platform. But overall, if you can get a good condition engine that hasn't been, you know, used and abused, you can take care of it, you know the history of it, 4G63s are an incredible power platform. So we're talking with RJ on why he went back to an Eclipse GSX, like what brings him back to these cars specifically. It's a nostalgic trip, man. I mean, even hopping in this thing with the, the movies, the video games, like, you know, seeing them around when like we were growing up as kids, like, you know, it's just nostalgia. It feels so good. Like these cars are just so neat for that specific reason. Another one was the modding platform, the 4G63. Like I said, an incredible engine platform to modify. And then like we mentioned earlier, it's a timeless design. Like, you know, like they aged really, really well. Now with all of the pros, of course, you're gonna have some cons too. So we kind of talked to RJ like what, okay, you know you love the car, I love the car, what are some things? I kind of agreed with them. You look at the interior, it's your it's a very 90s interior. A lot of lot of plastic, a lot of covers to things, but I mean it is what it is. I you know, that's that's what you're gonna get. Another thing you mentioned too, you know, as these cars get older, as a lot of people are snagging them up and holding on to them for a long time, like you know, back in the day, people pass these things on really quick. They'd have them for a year, modify them, blow them up, swap out the engine, give them to someone else, they do the same thing. And you know, people are holding on to these cars because of that nostalgia feel, like I said, and the parts are getting a little bit harder to find. The people that are holding on to the cars are holding on to the parts because they wanna keep it around for a long time. Mitsubishi ain't really making these parts anymore. And like your parts, like your bumpers, your fenders, uh, things like that, like they're gonna be a little bit hard to come by. And then finally too, it's just, there are a couple weak spots to the car, uh, specifically within the drivetrain uh, transmission being probably one of the bigger uh, trouble or problem childs that you might have to deal with, especially when getting into higher horsepower. And then the same with your, your drive axles. Uh, not the, the toughest out of the 
out of the selection there. But like I said, that's only when you get up into like the higher horsepower, if you're starting to make like four or 500 horsepower out of these, definitely wanna make sure that you upgrade those parts uh, so you don't get disappointed. But overall, man, this thing feels so damn good. The visibility in these cars is actually pretty like crazy good because the amount of just glass, like these windows are huge, the doors are huge. You have the massive hatch in the rear that you can look out of. Uh, it feels really connected to the road for even being how old of a car it is. Still feels really good. The Tain Flex Zs, I have them on my FRS, that's what's on here. Uh, like I said, it's like a very OEM plus feel of coilover. Uh, just like I said, it does a really good job just making you feel connected to the road and it's just such a fun car, man. I love it, man. <laughs> it's so fun. Like, okay, so it's not the fastest car in the world. Like, it's not gonna, you know, throw you back in your seat. But my God, is the potential of these cars are what makes them. A lot of things you're gonna wanna look out for with these cars, specifically if you're in like the northern part of the country is the rust. Like a lot of your main areas you're gonna wanna look for are your rear quarter panels, specifically down by the rocker panels and then up on the top of the quarter panel. And then most of all, the one that you probably heard is going to be your strut towers. The strut towers are ridiculously known to rust out on these things. And it's really kind of sad because I've seen a lot of them go just because of that. And it's a lot of money to kind of get it replaced. Like there's no real easy way to fix something like that. It's a very structural part of the car. And when those start to go, and when, you know, rust gets a hold of your car, that's, you know, that's pretty much, you know, you can't really get rid of it that easy unless you spend a lot of money. And that's where a lot of people just don't want to deal with it. And they end up ditching them. And that's how we lose so many of these great cars. The biggest thing is a lot of these engines have been swapped. A lot, a lot of times you won't know the actual miles on the engine because like I said, a lot of people try to push massive horsepower. They blow the engine up, they break something, they swap it out to something different. They don't even know the history on that engine. Uh, so like I said, just a couple things to watch out for. If, like not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but just kind of keep that aware or keep aware of that when you're looking at the price of these cars. Cause you know, you can kind of get taken for a ride if you're paying 15 K for a car that you thought only had 80,000 miles on it, but turns out the engine has had like 200,000 miles on it. <laughs> it feels so good. I love it. Hold on. We got a biker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't even look. That's fine. No turn signal. Okay. <laughs> Only there was like a sidewalk or something. It feels so good. I know I've said that a hundred times, but my God. I need one of these. I need one of these again. And that's going to be the issue with this series. I'm going to want to buy everything that I drive. Then I'm going to hop back in my freaking FRS and be like, oh, damn it. <laughs> so final thoughts on the 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. Absolutely love the car. We got to remember though, they are 90s cars. They are not going to make a ton of power right out the gate. That's not what they do. If you look at any cars from that period, they might not make a ton of horsepower right out of the gate. And some people do expect that kind of like modern cars, but they are so modifiable. And that's what makes them so freaking cool is that you can put some work into these things and make a good amount of power, but that's really not what it's all about. You know, these cars have such a good nostalgia trip. They feel good. Like you sit in them, everything is pointed towards you. Like the overall feel of the car just feels amazing. The modifications done to this thing, the wheel tire suspension, the downpipe, the intake, just make that experience so much more enjoyable. You can hear the noises, you can feel the road a little bit better. It looks so damn good. And you know what? If you've ever been thinking about scooping up one of these cars, I would do it right now now go find yourself a good one like rj's 99 gsx here and go have yourself a good time but that's gonna wrap it up for this episode don't forget if you're looking for wheels tire suspension like some gram lights or tain flex z coilovers don't forget to fitment don't forget to hit up fitmentindustries.com for anything that you might need for any car that you have let us know down in the comments below what car you'd like us to get behind the wheel of next and of course don't forget to subscribe i'm gels from fitment industries and we will see you later